That's like a factory sound. Okay. Kick it off. This one's easy. It's a USB. It's a pocket jewel. It's a pocket jewel. This is not a vape. This is a USB A slot, you know, normal socket to USB C. Um, we're going to see more USB-C devices, but a lot of old computers and laptops still have USB-A. This adapter is low cost and easy to use. Plug in that side, you just get a USB-C socket. It doesn't make your um, board be able to do like HDMI over USB-C or like give it, you know, the high speed or high power. But if you just want to use a USB-C cable with your normal laptop or computer, um, this thing works great and it's handy. Okay. Next up, these are my favorite sets of products recently, too. Yeah, this was by High Demand, and we finally got a place to make them for us at Film Plus. So, um, there's a bunch. So, there's these, all these USB adapter cables. This is the micro USB bend, and then there's... Um, I'm going to just go to there. Just, just go to all of them. Okay. So, let's show them all off. This is the micro USB other way bend. It's like, that's a technical term, other way bend. We've also got USB uh, micro B straight. So, this is the not bent USB micro. Um, this is some example of cable, and then USB micro socket. And then we have uh, non-micro parts. We have uh, this is a USB uh, C connector, so yeah. maybe it goes well with that USB C adapter you saw. You also have USB A plug, classic USB A. And we have USB A socket. So plug and socket. And I think we're, we might also by now have Mini B or we're going to have it soon. All right, so all these little parts, we had these HDMI cables, it was very similar. They even the same, the ribbons. Basically, if you need to make a custom cable, now these parts are not cheap because they're like handmade, basically. They have to like solder yeah. the connectors on. But if you want to make a custom length cable and it's really skinny, this is kind of like the way to do it. You can make any orientation setup cable. And you can use any length ribbon cable. So it's like a DIY USB cable kit. And I have some I can show off. I'll tell you the best use for this, I think. Yeah. Is anytime you're strapping a battery or another USB thing to another thing, ask yourself, what did you do in this life to arrive here? And then make one of these because that's, if you're if you're trying to like do all this stuff and you want the most uh, mm -hmm. optimized package, yeah. Um, these custom cables, I notice a lot of people do this with camera stuff. But like, cameras look, have weirdo connectors. Oh yeah, you just you, you or need... Or weirdo things that they need. Or you're 3D printing something, that's another thing, and you want to have like a cable yeah. kit that fits inside. So... Okay, so now... Hold on. Then, okay. So for example, you know, let's say we want... Um, Let's say we want a USB uh, micro right angle, and it's an extension cord, so on the other side we have another micro B. We just pick each one of these cables, and then um, these open up, and you can slot these ribbons that we stock. And we have these ribbons and I think, like pretty much every length, it's like, it's everything from 10 centimeters up to like 100 centimeters or so. Um, this one's taped together just to make it pretty looking, but the ribbons come like this. And they only go one way, and they're reinforced too, which is kind of nice. Just put the ribbon in, you uh, close it, and then you get the other side that you want. So maybe you want this to plug into a uh, USB-A. You open this up, both sides, you slot this in, and then you close it, and that's it. Now you have your custom cable. So. Uh, so now you have your custom cable. So basically you can do this with any of the combos of things. So you can have USB-C on one end and then like a micro B right angle. And you could probably get some of these cables, um, but they're not going to have these super flat ribbons, which are nice. You can weave them around a 3D printer or injection molded or laser cut piece. Yeah. And also it's not as easy to just pick and choose which connectors you want, especially the right angle micro Bs. Those are not always available with every length and combo. So. They're a little bit more expensive than just, you know, your plain DIY cables, but they're slim and they're modular. People like the HDMI ones, so I think they're going to like uh, the USB ones as well. And we've tested them in, like, every combo, and even with the longest ribbon cable, and they work great. Okay. Next up. 
hacker box is. It's a hacker box you're talking about. And let me tell you a quick personal story. Oh no. <laughs> no. Um, I, so I've been a subscriber of this forever. Yeah. And uh, Scott reached out to Hacker Boxes and he's like, oh, you guys should do a, uh, you should do a CircuitPython one. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, cool. And there was an email. I'm like, hey, folks, like, I'm a subscriber. And I got to walk over to my, my pile of boxes with this. So I like it when I'm a customer or something because I knew our, our customers would like it. So we do Adabox. Yeah, you got it. And then we got it in the store. Yeah, I do we do Adabox. And we, if, you, if you truly love subscription services for electronics, you should also subscribe to some of them. One of them is Adabox. We did that last night. Yeah. This one's Hacker Boxes. Um, you can buy this as a standalone in our store. And also, you can subscribe to Hacker Boxes. Of course. So what's in the box? Um, I'll go through it all in the box. So it comes okay. with... Just keep in mind, you got nine minutes left. Okay, I'll be fast. Um, it's got like a NeoPixel ring clone. There's a lot of different clone stuff in here, but that's okay. Um, servo, bag of components, potentiometers, and knobs, um, wires, uh, component kits, like LEDs and buttons and stuff. And this is kind of neat. So it comes with an itsy bitsy, which I think we took out. Might have. I think we Might. took it out. We but, took it out. But I have, I can, I can be zoomed in. Look at me zoomed in. Look at this. Yes. Look, it's in there. I think we took it out because we were showing something off. So it comes with a breadboard. Oh, can you go back to the... Yeah. Go ahead. That's everything. And then this is what it looks like in real life. Yeah, we got <laughs> breadboard, a little uh, ribbon cable, a 1.8 inch TFT display, um, a circuit Python sticker and, and badge and sticker. And um, this is like a not solder free kit. So what you do is you can actually solder in like these parts, like this screen and the buttons and the TC, and you can make a little uh, make code arcade game. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a little bit tougher than like Adabox because you do have to, it doesn't come pre-programmed and stuff and it doesn't come pre-soldered. But if you're willing to do a little bit of work, like you, you know, you get components, packs and kits, you can um, build some of these projects. I think it also comes with like a, a synthesizer kit as well. So. Um, this is a good kit for learning Circuit Python and also MakeCode Arcade because the Itsy Bitsy supports uh, M4 supports MakeCode Arcade. Okay. That's a hacker box. Next up. We got um, this tricolor. Oh yeah, this is the Itsy Bitsy. It was like underneath the e ink display. Um, we have. It's because it's so Itsy Bitsy you can hide it places. I know. So this is a 2.13 inch e-ink display that's high resolution. We actually got this as a featherweight last week. Now we have it as a breakout. Um, it's really nice. It's high resolution. It's um, you know it's not going to be as high res as like a, a Kindle display, but for a low cost uh, breakout board, you get quite a few pixels. It looks really good. It also updates a lot faster than. Um, There's not live video. I don't believe it. Oh, try color. So this is the uh, live demo. So you see, you can update the whole oh, display. Oh, this Super Kindle-like. Yeah, it's really nice. I think it's faster than my Kindle. It's faster than like the first Kindle, probably. Um, it can do partial updates, but we haven't set that up yet. This is just it displaying an image yeah. from a bitmap, and um, this is running off of a Metro, and uh, you might think, hey, you know, a Metro doesn't have enough RAM to display 8K of bitmap data. Uh, you're right, it has an SRAM chip on the back that um, does all the frame buffer management for you, so you don't have to use any RAM because these displays, you can't draw one pixel. You have to draw the entire display at once. So if you want to do any graphical stuff, you'll need to have a frame buffer. And um, our breakouts come with a frame buffer in them. Okay. So a nice ink display. And the stars show besides you and our community. You know what's kind of neat is there's a lot of people work on Facebook. Because <laughs> yeah, we have more viewers on Facebook because we're doing it during the day today. Oh, yeah. No one. I was working around on Facebook. Um, that's um, fine with us. Uh, here it is. Airlift breakout. So um, this takes the ESP32 that we've been using on the Pi portal. It has Arduino's really awesome Nina firmware, which allows you to do Wi-Fi communication over SPI. Um, and it comes in a breakout format. Now you could use a Feather or like our ESP32 breakout, but this is really compact, has level shifting, tri-stating. It's kind of like the ideal version. And this is also a little expensive because it's smaller and doesn't have much stuff. But you can use it um, with Arduino, with everything from an AppMega 328 and up. And in CircuitPython, you can use it with an M4. So here I have it running on a AppMega 32U4, which is a, not a very powerful chip. And it's got the airlift board here. 
And this is actually communicating with uh, the Twitter API to get um, our number of Twitter followers. It's so it's parsing JSON. Yeah, it's, I posted it. It's not as easy to do JSON parsing as it is with Python, which is why PyPortal was all in Python. But you can do it. So this connects to um, Twitter, gets the JSON data, parses it out, and then displays on the OLED, all using um, the ESP32 airlift. And okay. that's, that's our star of the show. That's it. Yay, lots of good products this week. Okay. Um, ready for that thing we do? Yeah. Okay, speed round. No, 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 no. We have a vape pen. No, it's a USB A, a three, two or three, two USB C adapter, super easy plug into computer, not even USB C port. Then we have a plethora of different DIY USB cable ends. You can pick one of each and then combine them with our ribbon cables to make custom cables. So we have micro B, and here's a ribbon cable with two ends on it. We have micro B straight. We have uh, uh, USB, uh, sorry, micro B sockets. We have um, uh, USB C. We have mini B. We have USB A plug. We have USB A socket. Yeah, we usually have every connector you could possibly want. Okay. Mix and match them. We have cable lengths from 10 centimeters up to a meter long, so you can make any custom cable. Except Hacker Box is 41. Best looking Hacker Box ever. Features Circuit Python, Itsy Bitsy M4, and Make Code. You get Itsy Bitsy M4, which is like people's favorite Circuit Python board. It's a small, it's a bread board. It comes with all sorts of parts and kits to make a Make Code arcade or circuit uh, learn Circuit Python. We have a high res 2.13 inch e ink display. This has like 250 by 122 pixels. So it looks nice and it's monochrome, so it updates in like a second or two. And you can now add Wi Fi as a co processor to your favorite chip, like the Teensy or the Mega 30, you know, 328 or your Metro M4 with the um, Airlift ESP32 Wi Fi co processor. We have Arduino library for it as well as CircuitPython code. Same chip that was in the Pi Portal, but now in a breakout format. That was new. 